Dragon's Maze marks the end of our time on Ravnica, at least for now. With ten guilds to navigate through the maze and an epic storyline to conclude, how did R&D go about the business of making Dragon's Maze a fitting end to the block? Let's find out. When we were putting Ravnica together the first time all those years ago, uh, we had it pretty easy in that we had a blank slate and we were setting expectation. Uh, no one knew what you know, a black-white set of cards necessarily as a group were going to play like, but this time uh, we had the expectation was already there and we had to deliver on it. So the original Ravnica was obviously very well received, but the one complaint I got was that there was no sort of payoff at the end. That like somewhere along the way you got your guild and then you never got any more. And so when we were building this block, we said, okay, part of this is let's give them the payoff. Let, let's, let's build something so that we get to pay things off at the end. And the entire block structure is really set up so Dragon's Maze could exist and we could give you something. Like we could end with a bang. And I, and I felt Dragon's Maze delivers on that. Like you got your stuff, you're having fun, and you get to Dragon's Maze and bam, we, we send you off, you know, in a blaze of glory. So for me personally, Coming into Dragon's Maze was pretty exciting because this was the first set that I got to do design work on. And it's one that has so much history because you have Ravnica as this very defined thing. And so you're playing within these very known structures, but it's all about making sure you deliver on Is It, that you deliver on all these expectations, which was a very different thing than when you're handed a blank page and go do something new. Having my first sets that I worked on being in Ravnica was super exciting, but it was also a really mind-blowing experience. You come in and they give you, okay, here's the next year's worth of magic. And you have to read these pieces of paper and sort of go through these, uh, the, these text files and see, okay, here's what's going on. Now, this is difficult for everyone who comes in because there's just so much information. But coming in with a gold set, it was just completely mind-blowing. I had to go through and figure out, okay, this is the green-blue card, this is the green-white card. Uh, and then, you know, very quickly it was thrown into, okay, now, now draft it. Um, you know, it, it, it was a tremendously great experience to, to get back to Ravnica and see how it was going. And it, it took a little while to catch up, but I think it was more than worth it. As a designer, uh, a black like Ravnica is a double-edged sword. I mean, on the one side, it's very well defined. It knows what it wants. You know, I, I'm famous for saying restrictions breed creativity. You know, Ravnica definitely makes you be creative because it's so well defined that in some level you, you have to figure neat ways to color between the lines. You know, that it, it really, it gives you what it wants. Ravnica is fun because there are these constraints. But then, by the end of the year, I was getting bored of the constraints and ready to move on to another set. And that's what makes magic so much fun to work on. Every year, there's lessons you've learned from the past, but there's what's new. And just like every set is different to play with, every set's different to work on, and that's a lot of the fun. I think my biggest takeaway from working on Dragon's Maze has to be the split cards. We were trying to solve the problem of the third set where we have 10 mechanics already, and yet we feel like we want to put something new on top of it, but we don't really have room for a new mechanic. It wouldn't make much sense. So the split cards actually managed to solve that problem as well as make drafting more interesting and give us monocolored commons or uncommons. It solved a lot of different problems at once, so I was really happy when we settled on that solution, and then amazingly surprised when it made it through rules, editing, and imaging, and came out at the end as this amazing, nice little uh, final cherry on top of the set. I think my favorite memory of Dragon's Maze was the first time I made a Future Future League deck with Pyrewall Shaman, which had a few different stats when we first played with it. It was only one mana to um, the Blood Rush it, and very quickly I was like, wow, this card is really powerful. I was, uh, every turn I was playing it and getting it back in the same turn really easily. And I was like, oh, I don't know, maybe we should change this card. And then, poof, it was just change. And it was this mind-blowing experience of like, oh my god, I, I, I got to change a card. Like, my first few days here, and all of a sudden, I'm impacting the future of magic. It was a, a, just a tremendous experience and, and completely exciting that this was a thing that I was actually doing. So when we first came up with the uh, 5 5 10 model, Aaron Forsythe sat me down and said to me, Mark, can we do this? And, and I, I walked away and I thought about it for a couple weeks and I came back and I sat down and I said, okay, Aaron, I think we can do Return to Ravnica. I think we can do Gate Crash. I'm not sure about Dragon's Maze, but yeah, I, I think we can do it. 
I literally did not know. I, I actually believed we could do the first two. I wasn't sure we could do the third one. And I just remember that. It's awesome when you, you know, when you see the finished set. Like, there was a moment in time where I was like, yeah, I think we can do it. The experience of going back to Ravnica was initially a little odd. Uh, Ravnica is the world I'm most proud of designing. So going back was a little daunting at first, but I also realized that since then, I've uh, been lucky enough to work with some really, really great creative people. And this was an opportunity for them to make their mark and to improve on Ravnica. Doug Beyer, Jenna Helland, Adam Lee, Jeremy Jarvis, and Richard Witters all came to Ravnica with a bunch of excitement and a bunch of expectation. We had the old material at our disposal, and they said, how can we make this even better? How can we enrich it? Where can we reinvent things so that they're more exciting? And that gave me an opportunity to step away a little bit, which is a little difficult for me, and to let them be awesome, to, to make their mark on Ravnica, and I really couldn't be more proud of the result. The story of the guilds will go on, but here in R&D, it's time to leave the world of Ravnica behind. Will we return? Who knows? But for now, other planes await. Join us next time as we visit Theros, where new tales will be told. On Inside R&D, from the Dragon's Maze, I'm your host, Richard Hagen, saying bye.